Welcome to our Friday Focus from Kyle Field with the All-American Dave Elmendorf with Will Johnson. I'm Andrew Monaco. For a while, it was just Dos Locos, but the tr Trace Hombres are back. <laughs> Good to have you back, my friend. 13th ranked Kentucky comes in tomorrow, 6 o'clock kick, 5 o'clock for our pregame along the Aggie Radio Network. Dave, what are you looking forward to when the Wildcats come in to take on the Aggies? This is a very intriguing game because of the similarities uh, on both sides of the ball. Uh, two teams that not only want to run the football, but are very capable at it. The number one rusher in the SEC and the number two rusher in uh, Benny Snell Jr. and Travion Williams. And on the other side of the ball, two good defenses that can stop the run. Uh, mm -hmm. A&M ranked number one against the rush mm -hmm. in the SEC. Uh, Kentucky up there as well, giving up only 105 yards a game. Well, he talked about the running backs being similar, the defenses being similar. The quarterbacks are similar also, aren't they? They are, and I think ultimately they'll decide the game. Uh, Kellen Mond, Terry Wilson, I look at it as whoever throws the ball downfield better is going to help their team win. That takes a little pressure off the run game. Maybe – makes a team take one of them outside the box something like that statistically they're similar they do a lot of things alike I think ultimately Kellen Mon may throw the ball downfield a little more and a little better than Terry Wilson I feel like that bodes well for the Aggies normally I would say that the Aggies are without Jamon Osborne who's been the leader of this receiving core but as we've seen all season long this is receivers by committee mm -hmm. everyone has seemed to step up at one time or another during this season well in Arlington last week Jamon went out and they immediately fed Hezekiah Jones about four times in a row when, exactly. when he went yeah. in so and Rashad Paul had a big catch in that game these guys can step up I've always liked the A&M pass game because you also include the tight ends in it. Jay Sternberger, Trevor Wood, they're very capable getting down the field, possession routes. When you include them with a lot of these sophomore wide receivers, it is still a very good core to throw the football to for the Aggies. You hate to lose Jamon, but it's right. still a good group. Dave, we were waiting for this defensive line of the Aggies to come through, and every single defensive line starter had at least one sack. We knew they were they, they came close. Five sacks against Arkansas last week. That's becoming a strength of this Aggies defense, isn't it? Well, we've known all along that the defensive line uh, was impressive, and, and they have uh, they proven it. Uh, they play extremely well. Tomorrow, I think there's going to be a little bit different strategy. What they're going to have to do tomorrow is keep Terry Wilson in a box. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't let Terry Wilson hurt us with his legs. We have to keep Terry Wilson in a box and make him throw it downfield, in mm -hmm. my opinion, because I agree with Will. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, Kellen Mond is a better passer uh, than Terry Wilson. So let's make Wilson sit in the pocket, uh, don't hurt us with his legs, and try to throw it downfield against the Aggie D. Will, does it help that the Aggies have faced mobile quarterbacks this season? I know they're not Terry Wilson, the same caliber, but they've kind of faced something similar. It does. I think it helps a lot. Kelly Bryant at Clemson, Tua can run around a little bit, and then when Alabama puts Jalen Hurts in there as well, but it does. I think you just have a savvy defensive front with guys like Landis Durham, Dalen Mack. I mean, th those guys, they're not just good players. They're technique savvy. They're sound because they're so far into their careers now. They just know how to play the position. Kingsley Kiki, too, mm -hmm. whether he's inside or outside, doesn't matter. They are sound. They are savvy. I think they'll have a good shot at, like you said, Dave, keeping Terry Wilson inside the tackles not letting him roam outside of it. Though the special teams certainly were special when Jay Sean Corbin took it to the house <laughs> in the opening kickoff. Good to see because that's one more thing Kentucky's got to be worried about for tomorrow, isn't it? Well, that's one thing that, that we knew about Arkansas. We knew that they had given up a, a kickoff return for a touchdown. We knew that they had given up a punt return for a touchdown. Kentucky's special teams are much better uh, than we saw at Arkansas. So, it's still important. It's important that we maintain, we maintain possession, that we catch all the balls, we don't drop them on the ground. Uh, I'm not as optimistic about a big special teams mm -hmm. play against Kentucky as I was about Arkansas. Anything to be made of four of the five Kentucky wins, their 5-0 and oh being at home, and is there an intangible to have it, them having to play at Kyle Field for the first time in SEC history? Oh, I just think they're now going to play with a little more pressure. Getting to 5-0, and oh, getting – to 13th in the country. It's a little bit of uncharted territory for them. Mark Stoof has built a good program over there. I mean, the, the, the win total keeps improving and improving. Maybe this is his best team. It's, it is a really good team, but I do think 
they'll play under more pressure tomorrow than they have in a while mm-hmm. in this environment and just as the 13th ranked team in the country knocking on the door of the top 10. It really is about the Aggies, though, just like it is every week, isn't it? Oh, it absolutely is, and we, we say that every week. The Aggies <laughs> are going to have to play well to beat the number 13 team in the country. Fortunately, they've had some experience in playing ranked teams. Yeah. Uh, they've played number one and played number two, and they played pretty well in both games, really, when you, you look back at it. Uh, so the one thing that, that concerns me tomorrow about Kentucky is – the different defense, the defensive front. They run a 3-4. Aggies have not seen that yet this year. And so they're going to have to be very smart on that offensive line. That's one of my keys to mm-hmm. the game is the offensive line is going to have to do a really good job of recognizing where the pressure is coming from. They can stunt a lot of different ways with four linebackers mm-hmm. to move around. So uh, that's the one thing that I think this offensive line is going to have to be careful about is not missing blocks when we see those stunts from the 3-4 defense. Mm-hmm. What else are you going to be looking at? I'm Which always one? looking at the red zone. Uh, the red zone is something the Aggies had to greatly improve upon from last year. Defensively, you can't allow the touchdowns. I always mm-hmm. say that. A&M is better about not allowing touchdowns in the red zone this year. The number's still not good enough, though. They're, they're allowing about 62%, 63% touchdowns on their opponent's trips to the red zone. Kentucky, though, is fantastic in the red zone defensively. You mentioned what they bring on that side of the ball, Dave. They're keeping people out of the end zone in the red zone. Twelve opponent trips down there, only four touchdowns scored on them. That's got to change. Yeah, he's got to break through. you got to cross the goal line when you get into the red zone. A&M needs to win in that area to win the football game to, tomorrow. But Kentucky's good at it. It'll yep. be a challenge. It's going to be fun tomorrow. Oh, I think it's, it, it's a great matchup. It's going to be a, a, a barn burner. Join us 6 o'clock along the Aggie Radio Network. Our pregame show will start at 5. This has been the Friday Focus for Will and Dave. I'm Andrew. Thanks for joining us.